vegetation grows on top of them, making the coral reef gradually bigger and bigger. Polyps depend on energy from algae that lives inside of them to survive. Since algae is a plant, they need sunlight to create food. That is why coral reefs are only found in warm, sunny water. Reefs provide food and shelter for many species, but they are vulnerable to destruction by pollution and overfishing by humans. The last type of aquatic biome we will visit is the freshwater biome. Unlike the marine biome, which is filled with salt water, freshwater biomes are filled with water that has very low levels of salt. For the most part, animals that can survive in salt water cannot survive in fresh water, and animals that can survive in fresh water cannot survive in salt water. Animals that live in or around freshwater biomes include fish, frogs, alligators, snakes, otters, turtles, and beavers. There are three main types of freshwater biomes. They are ponds and lakes, which have still water, streams and rivers, which have moving water, and wetlands, which are a combination of land and water. Let's move on to land biomes. First, we're going to visit the polar regions. The polar ice caps in the Arctic and Antarctic are harsh places to live. Plants cannot grow on the ice, so most life in this biome is animal. By living at the edges of the ice caps, the animals that survive there are able to find food in the ocean. Fish, mostly, or smaller animals. The South Pole is mostly populated by penguins. Seabirds like albatrosses, petrels, and gulls may also nest or visit there, and whales and seals thrive in the waters off the coast. At the North Pole, you might find polar bears, as well as water-going mammals like seals, walruses, and whales. Their thick layers of fur or fat help to insulate them against the freezing cold. South of the Arctic lies the tundra. The tundra is cold an average of only 18 degrees Fahrenheit or negative seven degrees Celsius. There are only two seasons here, a long dark winter and a short summer. Because it is so close to the North Pole, during the winter the nights become longer and longer until the sun doesn't rise at all. The situation is reversed in summer, days be become longer until the sun stays up all day and all night. Beneath a thin layer of topsoil, the ground is permanently frozen, even during the summer, when temperatures may reach 50 degrees Fahrenheit or 10 degrees Celsius. This is called permafrost. There are few nutrients here to sustain plants or animals. There are no trees. The growing season is too short. Plant life in the tundra consists of moss and grasses or small shrubs. There are still animals to be found in the tundra. Arctic foxes and hares, snowy owls, muskox, and caribou are just some of the animals that live there. Still farther south lie the forests. At colder latitudes, forests are dominated by evergreen trees. By keeping their needles all year round, they are able to make the most of the weaker sunlight. Farther south, the pine trees mix with broadleaf trees that drop their leaves when the weather turns cold. Forests grow where it is not too hot and not too cold places with lots of nutrients and water available. 
As a result, a wide variety of plants and animals make forests their home. Moose, deer, bears, wolves, foxes, rabbits, and squirrels, as well as many, many kinds of birds and reptiles make their homes in forested biomes. Another type of biome is grassland and savanna. Grasslands are wide open land with low growing plants like grass and flowers. There is not enough rain in the grassland to support tall trees, but too much water to be a desert. A savanna is very similar to a grassland, but it may also have scattered trees. Many different types of grasses grow on grasslands and savannas, and many large herbivores live there. Often, huge herds of grazing animals travel the grasslands together, seeking safety in numbers from the predators that hunt them. Although there are not many places for large animals to hide in the grass, there is plenty of cover for small animals, like mice, snakes, rabbits, and birds. In hotter climates, we find the tropical rainforest. Guys, today we are trying Adapted Mind. I'm so excited to try this game. I've heard really good things. We're looking for a game for my niece. I hear. Rainforests are forests that get a lot of rain, and tropical rainforests are very humid and warm. Situated close to the equator, they stay warm year-round. Tropical rainforests have the greatest biodiversity, that is, the greatest number of plant and animal species, of any land biome in the world. Trees in the rainforest usually grow to at least 100 feet or 30 meters in height, and from the highest part of the canopy to the forest floor, tropical rainforests are teeming with life. Some rainforest animals never touch the ground for their entire lives. Small animals like monkeys, birds, snakes, frogs, and lizards are common in the rainforest. Sloths, monkeys, bats, anteaters, jaguars, and thousands upon thousands of insects live there too. The rainforest is an important producer of oxygen for the world, as well as a home for about half of all the world's plant and animal species. Many new medicines have been found because of research on plants that grow there. Tropical rainforests are so large and dense that there are believed to be many unknown plants and animal species still to be discovered there. But rainforests are threatened with destruction as humans cut them down for wood and farmland. The last biome we will visit today is the desert. Deserts are dry. Some are hot and some are cold. But when most people think of deserts, they think of hot places. Deserts in warm places may get very hot during the day, but because they are so dry, they are not able to hold in the heat from the sun, and so they may drop to below freezing at night. Despite the harsh conditions, many plants and animals have learned how to survive in the desert. Cactus are a very famous kind of desert plant. But grasses, shrubs, and some kinds of small trees can grow there too. Many kinds of desert plants, not just cactus, have some kind of thorns or sharp spines to help protect them from hungry animals. Many types of reptiles live in the desert, snakes, lizards, and tortoises. Birds like owls and hawks and mammals like camels, foxes, and desert hares 
have all discovered ways to survive and thrive in the desert too. I hope you enjoyed learning about biomes of the world today. Goodbye till next time. So these are the biomes of yours. The, these are basically your biomes. Okay. Now we will do the notes regarding it. Because our notes are very, very small. But uh, environment topic is very big. Okay. Functions of ecosystem. Uh, productivity, decomposition, energy flow, food chain, food web, ecological pyramid. Ecological pyramid uh, means step by step by step uh, how they consume the food, how uh, the, this pyramid is formed. Okay, food chain, food web, and ecological pyramid. Nutrient cycle, uh, cycling. Okay, how the nutrients are being transferred from trees to herbivores, from herbivores to omnivores, and uh, omnivores to decomposers. And decompose as to plants. Okay. Uh, ecological succession. Ecological succession. How the ecological succession took place. Uh, productivity. It is the rate of production of an organic matter. Of an organic matter or biomass in an ecosystem. It is the rate. Productivity is the rate of production. How much the production is being done. So the biggest producers are plants. Okay of organic matters and biomass in an ecosystem. Primary production uh, at autotrophs level, at autotroph level, and secondary production at heterotrophs. Autotrophs, those who make their foods, heterotrophs, those who are dependent on the others, those who are dependent on others, okay? Uh, rainforest is always greater than coastal uh, marshes, is always greater than deciduous forests, okay? Coastal seas, four oceans, grasslands, open seas, desert. So these are your productivity. So rainforest has the highest productivity. Productivity, coastal marshes, second number. Deciduous forest means third number. Coastal seas of four oceans, four oceans and grasslands. So grasslands also have good productivity, open seas open seas and desert and desert desert has the least productivity decomposition process of a breaking down of complex organic matter complex organic matter uh, this statement you should remember exact word complex organic matter complex organic matter process of breaking down of complex organic matter into inorganic substances into inorganic substances steps fragmentation leaching catabolism humification and mineralization and mineralization so these are the steps first uh, step is fragmentation leaching and catabol catabolism humification and mineralization mineralization warm and moist environment favors uh, decomposition warm and moist environment favors decomposition. Garam or nami, environment mein agar humidity hogi, to decomposition zada hoti hai. Okay. As you all know, zada tar jo humare allergies hoti hai aur jo fungal allergies hogera hoti hai, wo majority of the time hum dekhte hai ki in the time of monsoon time period, humare shereer mein sabse zada allergy hoti hai. Okay. Because uh, this time period uh, supports uh, the decomposition, um, the decomposition uh, 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 bacteria, fungi uh, very much because this environment suits them a lot. Okay, warm and moist environment. Warm and moist environment. Monsoon has the warm and moist environment. So in this time period, decomposition has the fastest rate. Energy flow. Flow of energy from one tropic level to the another tropic level. From one tropic level to the energy, uh, another tropic level. So uh, whenever we eat food, we get the energy. Okay. Uh, so we eat food from the plants. So we get the energy from the plants. So uh, energy flow is basically that. Flow of energy from one tropic level. One tropic level to the another tropic level. Tropic level. Always... Uh, 
unidirectional okay always unidirectional always unidirectional uh, only 10% of energy is transferred to the next uh, trophic level so whatever uh, whatever the plant is having energy plant is having energy of 100% so uh, if we eat the whole plant okay if we eat the whole plant then only then only and only 10% of it we will get we will get only 10% of energy of plants we will get only 10% of energy of plants uh, rest is lost as heat rest is lost as heat heat and uh, waste products okay waste products rest is lost as heat food chain it is transferred of, uh, it is transfer of energy and nutrient from one trophic uh, level one trophic level to the next by process of eating are being eaten so food chain is just same like energy flow but uh, is, what, what word include it includes being eaten okay being eaten okay so this is your food chain types of food chain uh, grazing factor uh, grazing food chain uh, starts from green plants starts from green plants uh, detritus food chain begins with dead organic matter so uh, dead organic matter whatever there is dead organic matter they are being decomposed uh, by the decomposers just like bacteria and fungi okay so they are known as detritus detritus uh, food chain detritus food chain so bacteria and fungi have another kind of food chain and uh, the big animals have another kind of food chain that is known as grazing food chain so grazing food chain will be um, grazing uh, animals just like deer and uh, zebra are being eaten by lion and tigers and then uh, they get uh, to another level uh, so in this way grazing uh, grazing of food chain grazing food chain works and detritus food chain works begins with dead organic matter aquatic ecosystem mostly grazing uh, food chain mostly grazing food chain aquatic ecosystem mostly grazing food chain terrestrial ecosystem mostly detritus food chain mostly detritus food chain because in terrestrial food, uh, food chain what we see uh, that decomposition is done uh, at each and every level if whether it is uh, whether the lion dies then also the decomposition occurs uh, whether the deer li uh, dies deer dies uh, then also the decomposition of that deer occurs so the decomposers play a big role in terrestrial ecosystem play a big big role in terrestrial ecosystem not in aquatic ecosystem due to energy loss at each, each level only four to five trophic level possible only four to five trophic level is possible seldom more than uh, six okay seldom more than six levels are there so more than six levels are there so one trophic level to the another trophic level is known as food chain and energy flow energy flow and being eaten is food chain okay and energy flow is just a flow of energy okay due to energy loss at each level food web so food web is just a combination of uh, many food chains it's just a combination of many food chains if one food chain is there okay one uh, from unidirectional food chain is always unidirectional okay from one level to another level that uh, deer is being eaten by lion lion uh, and then lion is being eaten by decomposers and decomposers are uh, being utilized by plants so in this way food chain work food chain is a circle okay food chain is a circle uh, but food web is a um, combination of many circles is a combination of many circles it is the interconnection of many food chains and illustrates all possible transfer of energies and nutrients among organisms in an ecosystem by providing alternative for food to most organisms it ensures their survival it ensures their survival so majority of the food comes from from food web from food web because uh, if the lion will look only for deer then he will die uh, within few days he, he will die in within few days because deer is not easily available deer is just like a 
a human is having a birthday party theek hai deer uh, hunting of deer is just same like that okay uh, if a uh, lion and tiger want to hunt anything uh, then they they will hunt especially uh, uh, deer is a special case just like to party okay because deer are not easy to uh, capture deers are not easy to capture ecological pyramid uh, it is the graphical representation of a trophic structure of an ecosystem trophic structure of an ecosystem base producers and top uh, top pe kya hoga pyramid mein top pe kya hoga consumers the highest consumers what are the types uh, pyramid of numbers grasslands upright aquatic uh, system upright forest ecosystem spindle shape forest ecosystem spindle shape this is the spindle shape okay this is your spindle shape or lattu lattu ki tarah shape okay parasite food chain inverted parasite food chain is inverted parasite food chain is inverted okay so uh, base pe kya aate hain producers so yahan pe base pe kya aayenge producers and at the top uh, are consumers so this is the top uh, leave leave this place okay this is your top so at this point uh, the top consumers will came top consumers are uh, eagles eagles are considered to be as the top consumers pyramid of biomass pyramid of biomass grasslands comma forest upright grasslands comma forest uh, upright aquatic system inverted aquatic system inverted so pyramids of biomass pyramids of biomass grassland comma forest upright position pe hota hai matlab upright position this is your upright position okay and inverted position is just ulta triangle ulta triangle theek okay. hai sorry this is your ulta triangle and uh, inverted is seedha triangle theek okay. hai seedha straight triangle okay pyramid of energy always upright and unidirectional pyramid of energy is always upright and unidirectional nutrient cycling it is the process of movement of uh, nutrients through the various components of ecosystem through the various components of uh, the ecosystem just like we derived uh, several nutrients through shakes and uh, through many of uh, the fruit shakes or uh, mango shakes uh, just like mango shake or uh, banana shake or many other shakes we uh, get we get the nutrients from them we get the nutrients from them so anar ka juice mosmi ka juice so is tarike se kai sare juices so what we do uh, we are uh, multi we, we are dependent on multiple sources we are dependent on multiple sources so it is uh, the process of movement of nutrients through various components through various components of ecosystem we are the part of ecosystem so various components of ecosystem nutrient cycle is uh, travel like this okay it is not unidirectional types gaseous reservoir is uh, atmosphere uh, hydrosphere water carbon nitrogen cycle water carbon and nitrogen cycle sedimentary reservoirs uh, earth uh, earth crust phosphorus and sulfur cycle Sedi uh, what are the two types of nutrient cycle uh, gaseous and sedimentary gaseous and sedimentary okay reservoir is earth crust phosphorus and sulfur cycle so phosphorus and sulfur are being derived in the form of sedimentary sedimentary nutrients gaseous nutrients reservoir is at reservoir or atmosphere or hydrosphere water carbon and nitrogen cycle nitrogen cycle nitrogen is available in elemental uh, form and cannot be directly used by plants nitrogen is available in elemental form and cannot be used uh, cannot be actually used by plants so 
nitrogen cannot be directly used by uh, plants so that's why uh, in leguminous plants means uh, just like haldi haldi ke jo plants hote hain dal ke jo plants hote hain uh, dal means pulses ke jo plants hote hain so in sab cheezon mein uh, what we see uh, ribosomes ribosomes in leguminous plants in leguminous plants what we find uh, ribosomes i a kind of bacteria that fixes that uh, at Uh, atmospheric nitrogen into the soil such that it can be utilized by the plants such that it can be utilized by the plants fixation happens uh, by three different process microorganism microorganism industrial process fertilizer industry so fertilizer industry pro, uh, pro provides nu nutrients uh, just like uh, phosphorus potassium and sulfur okay nitrogen phosphorus and potassium so nitrogen is available uh, in elemental form okay. fertilizer industry thunder and lightning so thunder matlab agar uh, zameen mein hamare bijli gadti hai aasman aakashwani jise kehte hain theek hai uh, aakashe bijli jo gadti hai uh, wo agar gadti hai to uske through bhi nitrogen fixation hota rehta hai ठीक है उसके थ्रू सबसे ज्यादा हाईएस्ट रेट पे नाइट्रोजन फिक्सेशन होता है हमारे सॉइल में उसके थ्रू सबसे ज्यादा नाइट्रोजन फिक्सेशन होता है फ्रीलिंग न्यूट्रिएंट न्यूट्रिफाइंग बैक्टीरिया लाइक एज वेक्टर सो दिस इज आल्सो अ बैक्टीरिया एज वेक्टर एंड क्लोस्टी रेडियम क्लोस्टी रेडियम क्लोस्टी रेडियम एज वेक्टर एंड क्लोस्टी रेडियम दीज दीज आर द काइंड ऑफ द बैक्टीरियास that fixes the nitrogen into the soil okay because without nitrogen plants cannot survive blue green algae blue green algae anabina or spirulina spirulina blue green algae anabina or spirulina so these are the kind two kinds of uh, algae uh, the, the, these are the names of the two algae that fixes the nitrogen into the that fixes the nitrogen into the soil okay that fixes the nitrogen into the soil ammonia ions can be directly used by plants or ammonia nitrosomes nitrite nitrobacter nitrobacter nitrate nitrobacter nitrate ammonia nitrosomes nitrite nitrobacter or then nitrate nitrate can be used to form amino acids and a protein nitrate can be used to form amino acids and uh, protein and amino acids and protein so nitrogen exists exit from uh, organism by death excretion and de uh, denitrifying bacteria uh, pseudomonas 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 so yahan se ecological succession hum kal karenge theek hai approximately kal ya parso tak aapka environment khatam ho jayega fir dobara se hum uh, current affairs karna shuru kar denge that's all for the day thank you all i'll go over to one